everybody welcome back to the channel I'm super excited that you're back so today I wanted to talk to you guys about my process for clearing out my clothes and how I got to such a super minimal closet in my last video I showed you everything I own I believe it or not have since pulled out like a couple pieces that I wanted to part with so I thought I would kind of share my process with you guys and show you my closet actually like hanging up how it looks like what there is of it and um, I don't know just kind of talk about minimalism with you guys so I want to show you my outfit because why not <laughs> oh my god and I have the camera around my neck because this camera is my best friend Erica's camera she's very kindly lending it to me so I'm doing all the safety stuff <laughs> But my top is from Are You My? It has the most beautiful, super thick zippers. And then it's ribbed and cropped. My shorts are Levi's. And then I kind of DIY'd the back. I took out the stitching right here. And then my shoes are Nike. I have white socks on. And this is my cat, <laughs> Milkshake. Okay, so this is my outfit as a whole. Super cute, super comfy. It's really hot right now. And let's talk about the closet now. Okay, so da, 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 da. this is my side of the closet. I share it with my husband. This is my husband's side over here. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of show you guys what it looks like because I feel like my last video showed like maybe there was a lot going on, but this is all I'm working with. It's very minimal and I love it and I think my last video kind of showed how much I can do with the clothes. I plan on doing like kind of different like styling videos because obviously I find all these clothes to be essentials and classic so I kind of want to show you guys how I style my pieces because I made sure that when I bought something I wouldn't be stuck with just one outfit but rather that they would go with a ton of things because obviously I want everything to be super versatile. So I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up. So something that is really important if you're going to go the minimalist route is that you wanna take really good care of your stuff because you don't have a lot of it. So as you can see, these are all my shoes. I have one pair on right here. This one is empty right now. So five pairs. <laughs> so right here I have some little heels and then oops they're very low because I don't really like super tall heels I like really delicate refined looking heels and then I have boots right here I have my other Nike sneakers and then I have these slides and obviously these guys so yeah these boxes are this one's getting pushed a little bit from the container store and I think they're amazing because Something that I hate seeing is like shoes that are squished um, and obviously I don't have a lot so I want to make sure I take really good care of my shoes. So this is perfect for me. So moving on to right here. <laughs> this is Ryan's shoe box. This is actually a second pair of slides. I haven't decided if I want to keep them yet. They're a different color. They're the sand color. I have bags right here and then I have a hat. <laughs> I have underwear and then I keep my one swimsuit in here and then this is my jewelry and Ryan's and I labeled it because I thought I might forget. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I feel like I thought it was a great idea but now I'm like hmm. And then this is the box to these guys. Work your way up here. I try to hang up all my clothes. Um, if I had sweaters, I wouldn't hang them up because it's not good. I don't like hanging up anything that might um, get like weighed down on the shoulders because then the garment would lose its shape, but these are all really lightweight. So obviously these are all of my tops and then long sleeve, blazer, jacket, two hoodies and my amazing one piece. I have a couple things in the wash, but not much. Like I think it's a windbreaker don't think I have anything else and then up here I keep my pants my shorts would be up there but I have them on these are two pairs of sweatpants these are yoga pants this is like comfy like shorts on a top 
This is to um, a puffy jacket I have, but it's getting fixed right now. And then this is all like socks and underwear as well. There's not much going on in there either. So that is the whole closet. And I think it's pretty crazy to see someone have this little. I kind of get shocked myself when I see this because I've definitely been at the point where my clothes used to take up all of this. Um, but now it's just like that and I think it's perfect. And I thought I would clarify that it has taken me years to get to this point. So this is why I'm actually making this video because I feel like I wish someone could have taught me when I was kind of figuring out my style and what I wanted to do and what I wanted to put my money towards. So here you guys go. <laughs> Hopefully this is helpful to somebody. If not, this is just a really good time for me on quarantine. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so I thought I would start by showing you guys the pieces that I've pulled out from my closet. It'll give you some insight into kind of how I pick out pieces that I want to part with. So. First piece is this really pretty top by For Love and Lemons. There is literally nothing wrong with this top apart that I don't have the right bra to wear under it. So, and it's sheer, so I definitely need something because I'm not really trying to show <laughs> the whole world. But um, yeah, so I don't have the right bra. So then the next thing is, do I want to buy the right bra? And the honest answer is no, because it would just be for this. And I have a lot of tops that I prefer over this one. So, <laughs> I've worn this once, I've had it for two years. And I just think it's time to let it go. It also doesn't go with like the rest of my closet that much. I mean, it would go with jeans and shorts, fine. But in terms of my style currently, it doesn't quite match. I'm a little bit more straight than boho now. And I mean, it's been two years since I've had this, so it kind of makes sense that my style would change a little bit. And then this obviously doesn't quite match, so this one I am going to part with. The next piece that I want to part with is this skirt by Realization, <laughs> Realization Par, I think that is what they like to be called. <laughs> So I'm sure we've all seen the skirt online. It used to be super popular maybe two years ago. It's silk, it's super beautiful, it flows really well on the body, it's cut on the bias. So it has like the most beautiful drape to it. It's stunning, it's just that I don't really reach for it as much. Um, I went through maybe a year of wearing it nonstop, and I'm just tired of it. And I was kind of keeping it because it was my only skirt. But it's just honestly not practical for me. I don't wear it, so I may as well part with it, even though it's really beautiful. I definitely appreciate all the pieces I chose. I loved, and I appreciate the design, and I think they're all amazing, but they just don't match my current lifestyle. The next piece is another For Love and Lemons piece. This is a kimono that is sheer with white orchids so beautiful as well, but it's the same issue as the white top. I have a lot of black tops because you can't stain those. <laughs> and the way I shop now is that I kind of go for pieces that are classic, but kind of interesting like this guy. And most of the time they are available in white, but I don't trust myself as much with white. Not that I'm like a crazy slob, it's just accidents do happen. And it definitely hurts when you stain something that's a little bit nicer or that you value a lot, you know, like you place the value on the item. But <laughs> I would rather have pieces that I know are going to stand the test of time better. So I don't have any white tops apart from the other one, but those two wouldn't work together anyway. And I always kept it thinking, well, maybe one day because I love like Japanese influence, I love kimonos, but Realistically, I'm just not going to reach for it because it's the same thing that I don't really see myself getting the white top to go under. So I just think it's time. I appreciated its beauty. I loved it. Worked for my birthday maybe three years ago, but now 
I don't really have the clothes for it. And my final piece, it's actually two of these. Um, I also have this in black, but they're so bulky, so I thought I would hold up this one because you can actually see the jacket better in the ivory color. So it's the IMGA Pixie Jacket. It's amazing. It's just that I have a small torso and I feel like it kind of swallows me up too much. I know it's an oversized jacket, but I feel like I kind of disappear in it. And then like I mentioned earlier, I have a puffy jacket that I like. I love. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I actually can't wait to get it back from it getting fixed. <laughs> I sent it off to get fixed before the quarantine and in between then and now all the stores closed so it's just sitting there and then when they reopen I should be able to go pick it up <laughs> but anyway I know that I will always reach for the other one over these so these are amazing jackets but I just I'm at the point with minimalism where I really don't need so many options because the one good jacket is enough for me to wear with a lot of different tops so I'm still able to mix up my outfits to where I have a lot of variety. I don't really need 10 jackets. So these two are gonna go as well. So those are my pieces. It's kind of funny because <laughs> when I put them together, there's definitely like a color story going on. And I think it's just that honestly, I've become a little bit less bohemian and a bit more street. So you can kind of see it right here, which is funny, but people change, style changes, people Pro, whatever so that's just my own personal style direction I guess but I wanted to share why I got rid of those pieces because I think it's helpful for people to know especially with my closet being so like curated um, it's only right to explain why okay guys so I made a list of some of the things I wanted to talk about with minimalism and why I do it in like my personal journey. So um, I don't really use labels. I did say like capsule wardrobe. For me it is a capsule wardrobe because it is going to stand the test of time. I do have a lot of classics and pieces I can mix together. Pieces I don't see myself parting with for years. Um, so I think it is that but I'm not one of those people that count like okay I have 30 pieces of clothing and blah blah blah. Like, I feel like if you do this for a long time, you kind of get into a habit and then you fall into a lifestyle to where you don't really have to label everything you're doing, but obviously it is minimalism, but I couldn't tell you what, <laughs> like what it is, because personally I don't care. I feel good about what I do and I'm happy with how everything is and I have my own little routine with it. Um, something I want to mention is that some people will say it's not minimal to purchase clothes. I'm not that kind of minimalist. I'm obviously not shopping every day. There's like 10 pieces in there, but I'm not so restrictive. I don't care about the label. Um, like I love fashion. I want to make sure I still feel good. I love what I'm wearing. Support brands I think are doing a good thing for like sustainability, things like that. So if there's a piece I love, I will probably invest, but I'll think about it for a really long time make sure it fits with everything else I own, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, let's see. So, <laughs> can't believe I wrote this for myself. I just got nervous in front of the camera, so I didn't want to just like forget everything that was important to talk about. So the next thing is my personal style. So like I was saying when I was showing you the pieces, I feel like I was a little bit more bohemian but my style has become a little bit more street. Um, for me, the most important thing is comfort. I'm not really comfortable in dresses. I prefer like tighter fitting clothes and loose. Um, that's just my personal like preference. Um, so that's what I go for. Like I said, I go for neutrals. You don't really get tired of neutrals. And I'll always choose black over white because it just washes better last better all of that um let's see what's next oh yeah so something that is really important and that i've kind of learned to appreciate is getting your cost per wear and quality over quantity <laughs> so i 
I'm 23. I don't have money like that. I <laughs> just worked the whole time that I was in school. Um, I'm not doing anything crazy. It's just about your mindset. If you want to go shopping and spend $200 on a bunch of clothes, you can do that. It's not super minimalist, but not everybody has to be a minimalist. But what I do is I would rather invest in key pieces that are really good quality, brands that I love. I know they'll last a long time. I know they're sustainable for the most part. I try to get stuff that's made in the US. Um, that isn't um, like man-made fabrics where I can, things like that. So for me, I'll gladly invest into my clothing, but obviously I'll save for months. I don't care if I can't shop every week, every whatever time, I would rather just wait for the perfect piece. So it is like just changing your own mind frame and kind of, I don't know, it's like a different routine, but it's doable because I feel like if I can do it, anyone else can do it too. Okay, so some brands that I would recommend are RUMI, the brand of my top. They make really beautiful pieces. They are kind of extortionate with their prices, but if you want a statement piece that you know no one else will have, like not just people, but you won't really find elsewhere, like the design, the cut, the fabric, they're a good place to go to. They make really beautiful pieces. I always love everything I get and I know I'm going to keep them for a long time. The other brand I like is Reformation. They're super sustainable. They use recycled fabric, which I love, and they make the most amazing denim. And then I love Spell and the Gypsy, but they're a little bit more bohemian. And then I, of course, have to mention my husband's brand. His brand is Tokyo Not Japan, and he makes the most amazing pieces that you won't find anywhere else, and I have a lot of those pieces. All of my hoodies are that. My favorite jumpsuit is made by him, and it's super special, and I think an amazing brand. And then the last thing I want to touch on if you're actually decluttering is my process. So some things that I look for when I'm trying to declutter or that I don't so much have like my like decluttering moments. I just kind of see the pieces jump out at me because literally <laughs> there's three things. Um, so some things that will make me get rid of an item is if the fit is bad. Realistically, you're not going to mend it. <laughs> um, I know we have a lot of time right now, but I've, I talk from experience. I've kept so many clothes that I thought I would mend because something was just a little bit off. It's really hard to mend clothes to make them perfect. Um, I took sewing classes. I was a fashion major and it's difficult sometimes and it also takes a lot of willpower so some things are doable I definitely say like mend if you have a hole in something that's very doable but if you're trying to take something in a whole size or <laughs> like do something a little bit more than just patching a little something it's difficult um, something else that I say is if you just don't feel good in it like those pieces are beautiful, but I stopped feeling good in them, or I couldn't match them up with the clothes I have. And I know those clothes make me feel really good, so I'd have to buy something else. So, you know, you kind of go into this, like, making excuses path or waiting on something. I feel like if you have to wait on something to wear the clothes, you should just pass them along because they're not complementary to your lifestyle right now. Um... Obviously stains, big no-no. Get rid of anything with stains. It's noticeable and I think it's not putting your best your best <laughs> your best self out there if you're wearing stuff with stains. And don't just hold on to things because of the price point. Um there's a ton of things you can do like reselling to get your money back, so don't just stay stuck because something was expensive. And <laughs> lastly, this one it's a little bit controversial, but I feel like if people understand your lifestyle, they would understand if something is a gift or something like that, but you don't love it, I feel like whoever gave it to you would understand if it wasn't quite right for you and you wanted to pass it along. So <laughs> those are my 
little tips that I look for. And then try to resell your clothes online. A lot of things hold their value, so give that a shot too. Kind of opens you up to buy the next piece if you want to look at it like that. And yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back. Um, it's been so long that I've been filming this, so it's literally nighttime. Milkshake is still sleeping right here. But I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you're all safe and well, and hope you have a good day.